today's Edison Format deck profile, Twilight Rose Knight. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel and today we will be breaking down a Twilight Rose Knight which is also called a Mark of the Rose deck as well, too, which kind of revolves around a plant control style, since Mark of the Rose is pretty much a snatch steal for the plant arch type. So, pretty cool, pretty cool. Before we dive into that, of course, smash that subscribe button if you want to see more deck profiles in the future. So, starting off the deck... We have three copies of the namesake. We have three copies of Twilight Rose Knight. Now, Twilight Rose Knight will let us special summon a plant monster of level four or lower from our hand, which is pretty nice considering it is a tuner. It's a level three. And not only that, also provides protection for plant type monsters. So your opponent cannot uh, declare an attack on a plant type monster. So, not too bad, not too bad. Not only that, we're able to get a... Uh, an easier synchro summon, you know, go right into Black Rose if you wanted to, or uh, you know, anything else that's level 7 or lower. So, not bad, not bad at all. Moving on, we got two copies of our Botanical Lion. This is a plant, it's a 4, so we got this in our hand with Twilight Rose Knight. It can go right into Black Rose and blow up the field. Not only that, he does get a little uh, attack increase for each plant type monster on the field as well, too. So, not too bad. Well, ones that we control, not so much on the field. But definitely not too bad. A little one-two punch between those two. And then, of course, since it is a plant, we got two copies of Dandelion. So versatile with the fact that we get those tokens when it's sent to the graveyard as well, too. Moving on, we have our one copy of Blackwing Gale the Whirlwind. Obviously, it's just a very, very good tuner. Not only that, knocking down our opponent's attack points by half definitely helps in the long run. Next up, we have one copy of DD Warrior Lady. Just a very underutilized card in this format. Able to banish off our opponent's big beater monsters if they attack this face down, thinking that it's just a Raikou or maybe a uh, Mega Hamster. You never know, you never know. Followed up, we got one copy of Dark Arm Dragon, since he is the big bad dad of Edison format. Now we have one copy of Debris Dragon, able to bring back things like Dandelion. Let me just go into our Dragon Synchros. Next up, we have three copies of Mystic Tomato. This way we're able to either Floodgate into, uh, not really Floodgate, uh, Special Summon into other Mystic Tomatoes, or we can go into Sandgan. And one copy of Sandgan. <laughs> Next up, we got one copy of Trigodia. Very good for a little, uh, I don't want to say hand trap, but a special summon hand monster. Next up, we got three copies of UFO Turtle, so we can float into other fire monsters that are in our deck, which will lead right into our two copies of Lone Fire Blossom. So, able to float right into that. Not bad, not bad at all, especially because we have these two big plant monsters for Lone Fire. We have Titanial, Princess of Camelus, and we got Giga Plant. So Giga Plant is a Gemini, which is, you know, a little, uh, uh why are we playing this? But uh, once per turn, you can special summon one insect or plant monster from your hand or graveyard once his Gemini effect is activated. Thankfully, with that, we have three copies of Supervise, which turn him into his Gemini self, I guess you could say. So we got three copies of Supervise in here. And that's a little bricky. It's something that I'm testing out. Um, also, something that I've seen online a few times as well, too. So definitely be sure to comment down below and let me know what you guys think about the Giga Plant with Supervise. Next up... In our spell lineup, we have one copy of Allure of Darkness, since we do have a pretty solid amount of dark cards. We got one copy of Brain Control. One copy of Heavy Storm, obviously. 
Now we have three copies of Mark of the Rose. So with this, I'll read it all to you. Activate this card by banishing one plant monster from your graveyard. Then target one face-up monster your opponent controls. Equip this card to it. Take control of the equipped monster. Then once per turn, during your end phase, negate this card's effect until your next standby phase. So, kind of just take it during every one of your turns. But at least it can help, uh, I guess you could say, OTK your opponent if you are uh, fortunate enough to do that. Or at least clear out their field for the time being so you can attack directly and dwindle them down a little bit more or kind of take anything that might negate some of your other cards, like say, uh, like a Stardust. So moving on, we have a Mystical Space Typhoon and one more card for control. Autonomous Action Unit, reaching all the way back to Magician's Force for this card. Uh, Monster Reborn, or I guess you could say it's a premature burial, but for your opponent's graveyard. So, a little, uh, a little techy right there. Definitely a little techy. So moving on to our trap cards. We got two copies of Bottomless Trap Hole. We have one copy of Mirror Force. A copy of Solemn Judgment, a copy of Torrential Tribute, and a copy of Starlight Road to round out the main deck. Now moving on to the extra deck, we have our one copy of Ally of Justice Cataster, our one copy of Armory Arm, our Ancient Fairy Dragons, it's a little bit easier to go into them, our Black Rose Dragon, which again, very easy to go into, thanks to the uh the twilight rose knight we have our one copy of brio we have two copies of stardust one for starlight road then one to normally synchro into so it's nice to have a little versatility with that especially if you uh use your starlight then stardust gets destroyed and that's like oh well there goes my stardust and i still got tuners in here one colossal fighter one Blackwing Armor Master, since we do have Gale in here. Our Goyo Guardian. Two copies of X Saber Urbellum. And then one copy of Power Tool Dragon, which I would be playing at two if I had two copies. If that were the case, I would take out one of the Urbellums and put in a second Power Tool, since we're able to uh, yeah, get some uh, equip spells out of our deck. So very good with Mark of the Rose and even Autonomous Action Unit as well too, or Supervise. So. Thought Ruler Archfiend, and of course the Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, because we would be playing a Cyber Dragon in our side deck, pretty much like any other Edison deck. So that is all that we have for the deck itself. So comment down below, let me know what you guys think. I know uh, that supervised play with Giga Plant isn't always the best, and supervised might be a little bricky in the hand. But let me know what you guys think. I've seen some where it's a little bit more of like a like a chaos build, I guess you could say. Some where you're seeing Caius in there, and uh, yeah, a little more versatility. But you guys, let me know down below what you guys think. What would you play differently? What would you swap out, or would you play this version of it? Because just like anything else in Edison format, there's uh, 50 million different uh, ways you can uh, skin a rescue cat, I guess you could say. But of course, be sure to hit that subscribe button with that notification bell. Uh, be sure to check out the links down below as well too. I just dropped a pretty cool Welladad mat on the Etsy store. So definitely not bad there. But until then, we will see you guys on the next one. Goodbye, and good night.